eating disorders come in all shapes and sizes. You can be morbidly obese and have an eating disorder. But anorexia? Can you have anorexia when you're morbidly obese? I'm ashamed to say even I was incorrect in my assumptions about this case. For so many years, anorexia nervosa has been glamorized by everyone because of the fact that you take this very competitive illness and then you make the diagnostic criteria for anorexia significantly underweight only. The word is now exactly what it should be, which is a mental illness. It is real, you are anorexic, and you do need to be taken seriously. So hello you wonderful people and welcome back to another eating disorder related video. This time I wanted to talk about the plus size model Tess Holiday, who recently came out as being in recovery from anorexia and the world went crazy. There have been so many really unpleasant news reports and blog articles written. There has been even more hatred on her social media because of the fact that she is morbidly obese yet claiming to be anorexic and I wanted to make this video because the actual facts about all of this are so deeply buried in the search results that I'm ashamed to say even I was incorrect in my assumptions about this case. Now if you've ever had anything to do with eating disorders obviously you will know that you do not have to be skinny to have an eating disorder. Eating disorders come in all shapes and sizes. You can be morbidly obese and have an eating disorder but anorexia? Can you have anorexia when you're morbidly obese? And I initially thought, no, no you can't. I know the diagnostic criteria inside out for anorexia and one of the criteria is that you have to be significantly underweight to be diagnosed. It's a big problem, it's been a big problem ever since they wrote that diagnosis that there are so many people who are essentially dealing with anorexia but they're not classed as significantly underweight therefore they don't get the diagnosis, they don't get taken seriously, it's a big problem. So surely what Tess is actually talking about is that she has eating disorder not otherwise specified which is the ED category they lump you into if you're not underweight enough for anorexia and if you don't purge often enough for bulimia they lump you in the EDNOS category. Turns out I was completely wrong and I can't tell you how glad I am that I was wrong because they have finally gone and created a logical diagnostic criteria for anorexia in the diagnostic manual and apparently this happened in 2013 that they put this diagnosis in the diagnostics but I had never heard of it and it seems like the majority of the world has never heard of it but there is a new diagnostic class and that is atypical anorexia nervosa and that is the diagnosis that Tess Holliday has. Now atypical anorexia nervosa, basically it is all the other diagnostic criteria for anorexia. So you've got the body image issues, the terror of getting fat, the determined dangerous attempts to lose weight. You've got all of those things but you do not have the significantly underweight thing. Therefore you can now have anorexia nervosa, atypical, at any weight. And I think that is such a good thing for the world that they have finally created this broader category diagnosis because for so many years anorexia nervosa has been glamorized by everyone because of the fact that you take this very competitive illness, all eating disorders are very competitive illnesses, and then you make the diagnostic criteria for anorexia significantly underweight only. Therefore, anorexia before did create this hierarchy in eating disorders, not just in the minds of people who were sick with them and who felt like, I have, I have to be sicker to be taken seriously, I have to be sicker to be worth getting help, I have to be sicker before I can recover, I'm not sick enough to be worth recovery, all of these feelings you would have, but not only in the minds of yourself but also in the minds of doctors. Doctors would only really take you seriously if you fit the diagnostic criteria, that would be when you would get the help, that would be when you could go inpatient, when you would be looked after, and it was, it was nonsense because obviously, particularly these days with the obesity crisis and all of that, there are so many people who 
have started at a much higher weight and they kind of lost, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 pounds even and still not be underweight. But I would say that is at least as severely anorexic as someone who's lost, you know, down from being slim to being emaciated, but actually it's only a gap of 40 pounds compared to the 400 pounds maybe that someone previously morbidly obese has lost. You know, you, you've got to, you've got to realize there, there are different kinds of severity here. You can starve to death at any weight. You know, you can seriously put yourself in danger fasting and restricting and all of that, even if you are morbidly obese. And for Tess Holiday, she, you know, she had, I, I don't want to give numbers or anything, but she had lost quite a significant amount of weight, but obviously starting at a higher weight, she wasn't going to make it to underweight without probably killing herself. And like I said, I had to Google so many results and I had to go through so many pages of people agreeing with my previous misassumption that, okay, no, maybe she has Ednos. Yeah, she can have an eating disorder, but she can't have anorexia. And it was only about the sixth article I read that set me straight. <laughs> and that's crazy. That's crazy. So huge respect to Tess Holiday for bringing this illness to the attention of the world and letting them know that, look, you can have an eating disorder at any weight and actually it can be anorexia. Please can we detach the word anorexia from the word skinny? You know, it, they're, 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 not, they're not bonded together for life anymore. They're, they, they've divorced forever. Thank God because there are people who will use the word anorexia in the most ghastly ways. Can we stop throwing the word anorexic at people who are naturally slim to body shame them? And can we stop telling people who do not look anorexic that their eating disorder is invalid? Because as I have just learned, you can now be literally anorexic when you're morbidly obese. The word is now exactly what it should be, which is a mental illness. Just a mental illness, not something you, you feel that you need to like achieve or fit into. Because back in the day when, when I was diagnosed with anorexia, the diagnostic criteria was even more awful because it wasn't just the weight thing. They also had a criteria that was if you were female and of like menstruating age, you had to have missed at least three concurrent periods before you counted as anorexic, which was ridiculous because there are a lot of people who, like like I did, keep their period down to a very low weight. Um, it, it was it was a stupid, stupid criteria, and thank God they got rid of that. And now they have essentially gotten rid of the weight element of anorexia completely. Now, typical anorexia nervosa does still exist, so obviously there is still the old diagnostic criteria as a separate illness, just anorexia nervosa, which does still need to be significantly underweight before you're diagnosed, but really who gives a shit whether you're, whether you're diagnosed with the typical one or the atypical one, hopefully very soon we will all be able to see it as just a mental illness that is based on your behaviours, your thoughts, all of that kind of stuff that, you know, mental illness stuff, whereas before they were only diagnosing the people whose behaviours were steady in that they were restricting all the time enough to lose weight. Whereas we all know eating disorders, there's there's a range of behaviours and binging is one of them. And the people who fall into that mode a lot and who gain all the weight back, well, they, they weren't able to gain the classification no matter how much suffering they were going through, no matter how dangerous they were being. And there are a lot of overweight people who will put themselves on severely dangerous fasts and will lose, you know, a, a scary amount of weight. But because they're bigger, people think, oh, well done, you're doing great, just like they were doing to Tess, which is one of the reasons I think she came out about this, was that so many people were complimenting her on her weight loss, which, I, you know, I guess is understandable. In a Like, we need to really rethink the ways we comment on weight loss. But when you see someone who's very plus size, they lose a lot of weight, you think, oh, well done, you're making yourself healthier, when in fact she was killing herself and she had to tell people, please stop commenting on my weight. You know, you're, you're basically, I mean, this is my own words, but you know, you're basically applauding me killing myself, but you just couldn't see it because she was plus sized rather than emaciated. 
So I think that Tess Holliday has brought a lot of important discussions to light with all of this, that commenting on people's weight loss can be a bad idea sometimes. Like maybe you want to just throw in a, are you okay if you see someone's weight dramatically alter? Um, whether they're big, whether they're small, if you see their weight dramatically alter, just ask them if they're okay. If, if you're going to comment on it at all, um, because the, the subject of commenting on people's visible weight loss is honestly something that deserves its own video. For some people it's, it's like a mm -mm, don't comment on it, don't comment on it in either direction, it's triggering in either direction, but for other people, myself included, people commenting on weight is actually quite a good and important thing because it helps you see yourself more clearly. If you can see what other people are seeing, you can see that your weight loss is real and that it's serious and that it's it's not, that you're not just being dramatic. So that there is a flip side to the like never comment on an eating disordered person's weight thing and I would like to talk about that more at some point. And I think one more thing to add is that I hope people will treat Tess Holiday with the same sympathy, empathy and love that they would any other model dealing with their eating disorder. Though we all know the modeling world is incredibly toxic. If you're a plus size model who is as well known in the world as Tess Holiday is, God, the amount of fat shaming you must get on a daily basis has got to be horrible because anyone who is deeply fat phobic, you're the most obvious role model out there for bigger women and anyone who is against that is going to come directly for you. So I dare say Tess Holiday has been dealing with fat shaming severely for a long time both in her day-to-day -day job and on her social media and all the rest of it and now that she's come out as anorexic and so many people even even you know even people who think they're well up on eating disorders so many people don't think you can be anorexic and obese and and now you know the the hatred that must be coming at her from people who think curing morbid obesity is, is just stop eating stop being lazy stop eating that's it you know if, if people who that that's their opinion and she's saying actually i'm struggling with anorexia i'm struggling to feed myself at all people that uneducated and that cruel is not going to be able to put these things together in their mind and people like that they generally lash out when they don't understand things they throw a tantrum and they lash out so um she has a tough battle ahead of her both in recovery and in dealing with idiots dealing with seas of very 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 toxic idiots but yeah please remember but as I said, you can starve to death at any weight. Like, yes, you will live off your fat stores for a while if you starve yourself when you're bigger, but you will starve to death eventually. And it won't be once you're emaciated. It will be long, long, long before that. So if you are bigger and you do want to lose weight, you still need to diet healthily. And if that kind of thing takes your mind to a very toxic place and does lead you to anorexic or bulimic behaviours, um see a therapist before you attempt dieting would be my advice that you do need to do it healthily you can put your life at risk you're, you're not you're not immune to all the problems of anorexia just because you're bigger your hair still will fall out your period will stop you will pass out you will have a heart attack you, you can have all of these things still it is still serious and i hope people see that so for this video i would just like to wish tess holiday and anyone like her huge good luck and sympathy in their recovery and huge good luck dealing with the idiocy that comes at you when you are dealing with an eating disorder, but you don't look eating disordered. I think it is incredibly good news to share that they have finally, finally taken looking eating disordered basically out of the DSM. That now anorexia, it's not going to be this, this award that people feel they have to win anymore. It's not, it's not going to be like, oh my goal weight is once I'm statistically anorexic which I know is the sort of thing that people do because they they feel and oftentimes they know they will only be taken seriously once they have that diagnostic criteria therefore they have to set they have to set their ultimate goal weight so very low 
whatever weight they're starting at before they feel they're going to be worthy of help and that, that is so painful and so terrible so anyone who is out there with atypical anorexia nervosa and you are trying to get people to take you seriously and to understand it's a real it's a real disorder it is real you are anorexic and you do need to be taken seriously if you are fighting that battle then as hard and as horrible as it must be and the amount of shit you must have to go through with idiots uh I am so proud of you for doing it and I'm so glad that there are people out there getting this message across because more people are going to get diagnosed now and that means more people are going to need hospital treatment and all the rest of it and that means that we're going to have to actually start creating more places where people can be treated for eating disorders because I don't know about the rest of the world but I know that in the UK getting treatment for eating disorders is hell on earth. Um, there is just not enough and hopefully that will start to shift if they are suddenly realizing oh my goodness the statistics we have on anorexia are completely out of whack actually there's a lot more people with anorexia we need more care we need to put more money into this and hopefully other kids you know in a few more years will not be stuck in the situation that i was when i was young with my ed and just just the lack of care and hopefully kids who are at a higher weight will be taken just as seriously and will be cared for and hopefully maybe you know i think it's going to take a while but in another decade maybe maybe there will be no one who sees anorexia nervosa as this badge of achievement that they have to get that you know that's how it felt when i was young and that is a shitty feeling and it's so stupid for a mental illness and it is all all because of the way the dsm was originally written the you know they stuck these criteria in anorexia you have to lose your period you have to be severely underweight and they made a competitive illness into a great big competition and thank god they have finally rectified that so um yeah with all that said i will do a shut up and uh wish tess holiday and anyone dealing with those issues well and uh yeah the rest of my ed content will be linked below if you want to go watch anything else and now I'm going to shut up and go away because it's like six o'clock in the morning this is an insomnia recording and uh hopefully it's not as garbled as my brain feels so <laughs> over and out bye bye